Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, it was a nearly perfect performance in Annapolis. 20, inside 10, 5, he's going in! Touchdown! Got around me from 45 yards out! As the Cougars' run game got rolling. The 15, the 10, the 5, the dive, the touchdown! Tyler Algier from 34 yards out! BYU manhandled the midshipmen to start the season 1-0. And we're talking about it for the next hour with the coach and running back Lopini Katoa. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Hello and good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo, Utah. We are on our temporary second floor show set before a return to Studio C later in the month. We do miss our live studio audience, but as always, we invite you to join the conversation by submitting questions for Kalani on Twitter using hashtag Sitake Show, as well as Facebook and Instagram on the BYU TV sports accounts. We'll take your questions for the coach later in the show. All right, here's what's in store for you over the next hour. We will recap the resounding win in Annapolis last night. We'll have Q&A, not only for Kalani, but the, the Cougars, too, as we uh, accessorize a little bit to deep blue. We'll look at what receiver Dax Milne has overcome off the field to excel on it. And we'll chat live with junior running back Lopi Katoa. Well, less than uh, 24 hours ago, he was busting moves in a victorious locker room all the way across the country. Tonight, he's settled into his seat here on the second floor. He is the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Sitake. Good to see you again. What's up, Greg? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after all the uncertainty of these last months, last night was a night where you and your guys left kind of no doubt on the field. What a great night. Yeah, we just had a lot of fun, and, and I, I love the way the players and the coaches prepared for the game. And, uh, you know, it just went really well for us. And I thought, um, you know, just a clean game and looking at all the just the way the guys are ready to play I, I love that they were ready and, and executed well in all three phases and then uh, pretty much error free with with I mean with all the movement that the, their D line does up front our um, O line held their ground and, and our offense didn't fall start and you know it was all the work that they've done in the past month that paid off and uh, defensively with the hard counts and stuff like that and that's uh, a good sign when you have a bunch of veterans and guys that are uh, mindful of those mistakes that usually would get uh, an experienced type of team. You mentioned all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, could could post-game dance moves be considered the new fourth phase for BYU football at this point? Man, I, don't, I don't want it to get to that point where, you're, where you know, coaches and players are thinking about dance moves. But <laughs> if, if you don't already have them in, 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 in your back pocket, then don't work on them. Just, uh, you know, get good grades and then learn the playbook and we'll be okay. <laughs> Let's uh, relive last night's victory with game highlights presented by Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward. And uh, BYU, after uh, holding Navy's offense to a punt on his first possession, takes the Cougs, their first possession that is, and all the way to the house. This is the start of a big night for Tyler Algier, Kalani. Tyler Algier, Algier did, did this in fall camp, a very similar run and scored in, in a scrimmage, an 11-on-11 type of deal for us. And um, you know, the O-line did an amazing job blocking for both he and, and Lopini to bust these big, these big run plays. And this is Lopini Katoa. Tyler went in from 34 and Lopini from 39 and a couple of converted PATs. And BYU's off to a nice uh, 14 nothing lead early. 14-0 uh, lead, uh, maybe the only negative offensively of the night was, was this play. Maybe a stumble a little bit from the wideout, throws the, uh, the pass off a little bit. But this is what the defense does in return, Kalani. Yeah, great response, and you know our defense knew that our offense was going to try to get the early lead and and uh, take some shots and throw the ball a little bit, and uh, knew that we would probably you know might get into that point, and then that was a response that held them to no points and got the ball back to our offense. Nice chunk play from Tyler again, and then Zach Wilson to Lopini Katoa for the second time in the first half, and BYU's off to a 21 nothing lead on a fourth and one, big stop from BYU to get the ball back. Yeah, great play by Pepe and, um, you know, D-line hustling, taking away the fullback and uh, just love the fact that you see all those white jerseys in there. And uh, Jake Oldroyd gets his perfect night continuing with a field goal, make it 24 nothing, And then uh, we're getting close to halftime now. Neil Pau thought he got in, did not. And uh, Lopini Katoa made no mistake, reached the ball across the plane, and that gives Lopini three first-half touchdowns. You guys are up 31 nothing at the break, Kalani. 
Yeah, I just felt really good about, you know, I think didn't even punt yet, and so that was a good sign. You know, and the offense responded well in the second half to open up the, the second half, got the ball back, and we were able to keep uh, Navy's offense off the field for a while. So Gunnar Romney down the sideline, and then Gunnar Romney down the sideline again, and he takes this screen pass all the way in. And, and you talk about what you saw from Tyler in camp. You saw some of this from Gunnar in camp, too, didn't you? We did, and, you know, we, we feel really comfortable with our receiving core, and, and we know we lost three seniors last year, but uh, we were excited for Gunnar to show what he's got and try to get the ball to him as, as soon as we could. And, again, more stifling defense as a Troy Warner is first in on the stop there with Pepe. Yeah, and the, the DBs did a great job. I mean, they didn't, they didn't have a lot of uh, work, but you could see the way they showed up to the play there with Chaz and uh, just getting the ball back to the offense, letting them possess the ball and, and make big plays. Another big play from Gunnar Romney. Four catches, 134 yards for Gunnar last night. He has that big playmaking ability. All, all of them do, you know, Neil and, and uh, you know, Dax, but also Chris Jacks. I mean, there's a lot of guys that we have that we feel like we can throw the ball to. And Tyler Algier? For a second time, he reached for the pylon. A late call on this from the side official. The call did come touchdown. They did review it, called it a good score. And BYU's up 45 nothing at that point. Uh, Jake Oldroyd, 48 nothing, And we're still in the third quarter. They switched quarterbacks. Navy did at halftime. Got a couple things going in the second half, at least a couple of chunk plays. Yeah, I had a mistake there assignments, uh, with our assignments and, and um, gave up that big play, which was unfortunate with this, this field goal. But... Uh, really valuable reps for those guys that, that were in, the, in, in on that drive. BYU pretty deep at the wide receiver core, and this uh, another example is Keanu Hill gets in and makes a difference uh, as he checks in. Yeah, another big target, and we feel like those young receiv- receivers uh, are going to be give us a bright future there in that position. Jackson McChesney's score makes it 55-3, to and then a strip from Max Tooley, a recovery from Morgan Piper, and you guys finish this one out in the dominant fashion, 55-3. to is our final score. BYU wins a season opener for the fourth time in five season openers under Kalani Sitake. And you take a look at uh, all these tremendous numbers, and among them, you can focus on the fact that uh, Navy, which plays possession football as well as anybody, was out possessed by almost 15 minutes by you guys last night. Uh, I think the key, I mean, it was just, it's a, a team win, you know, and, and the offense taking care of the football had that one uh, turnover, but the defense getting out, getting out of drives early, we had a a few three and outs there, you know, to get the ball back to our offense. And uh, I think it was a a great game for for, uh, all three phases, but really happy with what we did offensively and defensively with with possessing the ball. So first one in the books, you see it there, 55-3 at Navy. Army is next after a bye weekend this weekend. And as we see uh, eight games still on the schedule, and I guess as we talked about last week, a similar theory in that uh, there could be more games to come. Yeah, we're hoping. I know Tom's working hard on it, and uh, hopefully, you know, there, there's some teams out there that would want to play us, and, and uh, you know, we, we have room for four more, so hopefully we can get that filled up. So many great moments from last night in Annapolis. So the stands may have been empty, but the list of great plays, definitely not. We're going to focus on a few of them now in tonight's Cougar Close-Up. We'll start with BYU's first offensive possession of the evening, which led to the first score of the night and the first of two TDs for Tyler Algier. We saw it before. We're going to see it again. Just what Tyler did well to make this play happen. Well, I think what, what Tyler has great vision and, and being able to take a run and bounce it and, and go left or right, but go against the flow. Also seeing it, the little things, the blocking downfield. Uh, I think you can easily see what the old linemen are doing out there. And, and, and uh, with all the movement that Navy does, for them to stay on their, line, on their blocks and, and even the receivers, that block downfield. Those things are really huge when it comes to breaking big plays. And the receiving uh, group blocking downfield was a big key for our, for the success that we saw in the run game. And lest we forget, Coach, when this season, when last season began, the guy we're seeing there was playing on the other side of the ball, right? He was, you know. And I think um, looking back at it, whenever he was a running back and had some carries, I think he he did well for himself and and uh, might might have had uh, might have been leading the team in in rushing yards. So. Uh, it, it made sense to move him full time to, to running back, and uh, you know he can move over to the linebacker as soon as he. I mean, he, he's one of our best players, so he can play either position. But I, I think the vision and the the way that he he's natural for for uh, with the ball in his hands, um, I think he's on the right spot. And, and we have a good bunch of linebackers that that are, are really close to him because he used to be part of that group too. Yeah, and, and you could say, he, he might miss it a little bit, but he loves playing running back. You could tell. Oh, There's he a lot likes of passion there. He likes scoring touchdowns. Yeah. Has, a, <laughs> has a better chance of doing that on the offense. Yeah. 
Well, Navy, uh, not typically a team that lets you rack up the TFLs, but uh, BYU was in the backfield all night last night. Eight tackles for loss, including five sacks. You normally don't get a ton of sacks against the Navy team, but the Cougs at Kalani hard to the ball all night. Yeah, and, and you know, Troy, just it's so nice to see him play football. And here he's, you know, we, we played him at corner um, a lot in, in the game, and, and just the, the comfort that he has. He's been, you know, he's a lot stronger than he has been, and uh, all that time in the weight room pays off, and he, he's not uh, flinching at any cut blocks. He Instead, he holds his ground and fights off blocks and, and is able to make tackles like that. But he, he does a great job at coverage, and, and he can play any position when it comes to safety and, 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 and corner and nickel. So uh, that gives us the flexibility, gives us a lot of things that we can do defensively and play, get the best level on the field. Of the numbers we just noted there for a moment ago, it showed that uh, Navy averaged 3.1 yards a carry last night. Last year, great year for them, obviously. They were averaging twice that. Six yards a pop on the ground, cut in half by you guys last night. Yeah, I, I think we mentioned the fundamental part of the game is tackling well. You know, And I, I give a lot of credit to our coaches, uh, emphasizing that to the players, but also our players working hard and, and, and making sure that they're in a position to, to feel comfortable with their tackling ability. And you know, um, even if we're not going live in practice, that, that's still uh, an opportunity for us to come to balance and be in the right position so that we can ensure that a tackle is made. And that allows you to limit big plays, which is what we did to Navy last night. Okay. The uh, last play that gets our close-up comes on BYU's first possession of the second half, and it was uh, Gunnar Romney turning a short pass into a long score. And he's a long guy too, right? Yeah, and, but he, he's, he, he, as you can see here, he can change direction, and he, he, his burst is unbelievable. But uh, his running ability, he, he's been doing this uh, ever since he's been playing football, you know. And so I, I think this setup and the play call is perfect for the, as, as aggressive what we've been seeing from the, their defense and just getting the ball out and, and, and uh, getting the, the O-linemen downfield. I mean, you see these O-linemen, Brady and, and Clark, getting downfield, and then uh, Gunner does the rest. And then, uh, you know, we've got to get the ball in, in our playmaker's hands, and he's one of them. If, if, if Gunner has a, a full, healthy season, what kind of ceiling are we talking about for this guy? Uh, I don't, I don't want to, like, you know, make any statements other than he has a big playmaking ability, and, and uh, you saw how important it was for us to get the receivers the ball. But to spread it out, I mean, we, 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 hit, we hit so many different targets in this game, and that's and and you know when we felt comfortable with the run game, we didn't have to lean on the pass as much as as, as we did uh, in the run last night. So uh, I feel really comfortable with the guys that we have there, and uh, we're really deep at the receiving core and and with our tight ends as well. So um, our backs can catch out of the backfield, and I think uh, Zach and Baylor and all the other quarterbacks do a great job at spreading the ball out. Wasn't a big night for the tight ends last night, but you've got guys you trust there even without Matt Bushman, right? Yeah, you, you know, I think Isaac Rex and, and, and uh, Mason Wake did the bulk of the work, you know, and um, those guys, uh, their biggest asset is that they can block at first, and, uh, and then they happen to have soft hands, and, and they were mentored by a great, great player by the name of Matt Bushman. And um, Coach Clark has done an amazing job with that position, and uh, their roles will start to grow as, as we go throughout the year and possibly even to next week. Okay. For your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play, -play, watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Brady Christensen on tomorrow's edition. When we come back, Dax Milne's Why comes from home, and we'll take your questions for the coach. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare. Always here for you. Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. Smith's. Fresh for everyone. And by America First Credit Union. We're here to help. BYU has announced its home game attendance plan for September 26th at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the game against Troy. 6,000 fans, limit of 6,000 fans in attendance, 1,500 fans in each self-enclosed section of the stadium. And for full details on how it's going to all go down, you can go to BYUCougars.com. So, Kalani, what do you think of a plan to get fans in the stands for your home opener? Yeah, it's a good start. I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we get to have fans there and 
you know, we love having our friends around. So um, it's a good start. I would take as many as we can get. And so if it's 6,000, I know they'll, they'll make noise for 60. And last night we had no fans at all in, in the building. And that was uh, clearly a, a unique and unprecedented experience. I felt, as someone calling the game on the radio, that once the game began, it just felt like football. That The play between the whistles felt normal. The pads popping, the excitement, the big play. It all kind of felt like football once we got into it. And I wasn't focused so much on who wasn't there as opposed to the players who were there making plays. How did you see it? I felt the same way. I, th- I thought the players were really focused on what was going on and uh, um, on the field and the adjustments that we made on the sidelines, you know. But, uh, it was it was right when we got in there. It was like we're just right back to our competition and um, just had you know we we try to have a lot of excitement on the sidelines and you could probably hear some of it you know on TV and everything. But uh, I was just really happy that the guys were, were excited to play that game. They've been waiting for this moment and it was like one of those moments where you just like hope this doesn't get taken away. And hmm. even going to the stadium, it just didn't feel real until it just happened, you know. And so. The guys were so excited and amped up, and I, my only worry was trying to get them like to settle down a little bit two hours before the game, you know, and uh, I'm just glad that they were ready to roll. Now that you've been through it, got to it and through it, what do you think was um, either sh- shown maybe to, to people who wanted to see uh, what's possible on opening weekend in college football? Oh, we have, I, I said it before, we have a lot of guys that have played and uh, worked hard to get to this point, you know, and, and I know a lot of teams can say the same thing, but we have a, a high number of players with experience on the field and in traveling and being part of the program. And so leaning on those veterans and their leadership was huge for us in this game. And uh, we're looking forward to them getting us to the next one because uh, we, we can't do it and we can't be as ready as we are uh, just having the coaches do it, having those leaders. And uh, we have a, a large number of leaders on this team. It's not just limited to the seniors. There's a lot of guys that are young that, that are, feel comfortable leading. And, uh, you know, you can only have great leaders if you have um, guys that are willing to follow as well. So the culture on the team is thriving right now, and I'm, I'm excited to see how far this can go. All right, let's uh, hear from Cougar Nation now. Fired up, certainly, after last night's performance. It is a Q&A time here on the Sitake Show, and we will go to Twitter first up. And at DevonCK22 asks, in uh, what ways will Army's version of the triple option look different from what we saw from Navy? Uh, very similar. They'll, they'll do some things that are a little bit unique. And I think you saw Navy get into the shotgun and spread a little bit. And I think Army now has the film, you know, so they'll see how we, um, our game plan was against Navy. And so um, I don't want to give away our game plan for Army, but we have uh, some thoughts and, and things that we feel could be a little bit brand new and, and unique to, to this game. And so we're looking forward to implementing that and, and getting some extra time and, and getting ready for that game. And the, They'll play against Louisiana Monroe this week, this mm-hmm. weekend, and uh, then we'll have two two game films on them with Middle Tennessee State in that game. So uh, we'll be we'll have a good game plan, and we'll see if our guys can execute it. Army looked pretty good in that Middle Tennessee game. They did, and they're tough and well coached, and um, they won't quit. You know, the, these these young men in the military, they work hard, and just like Navy, they, those guys won't quit. But uh, you know, we we have our plans too, and, and I think we're we're gonna kind of see what how we match up. From that Army Middle Tennessee game, by the way, you know how rare a 19 play touchdown drive is? They had two 19 play touchdown drives in that game. Yeah, and then, you know, you look at Army, and I think they played like Michigan tough, and then they played Oklahoma, where they just limit the, the play, amount of plays for yep. the offense. And uh, when, when they do that, it becomes a tight game. So we have to be ready to get out of drives, but also be ready to, you know, buckle down and make sure that we, we get them behind the chains a little bit. Okay, at Vacavidi on Twitter asks, how is playing a service academy different from uh, playing other college programs? Um, you know, I think more for the defensive side, it's just un- unique with the options, but playing against the triple option. But uh, when it all comes down to it, it's football. You know, we, uh, we're going to lean on toughness, and it's not just uh, unique to this week. That's going to have to carry out for, for the rest of the time. And uh, we, we asked our D-line and uh, with Kyrus and, Zach and, and Bracken and, and the whole bunch to, to you know, be physical and, and, and make sure that we try to dominate the line of scrimmage. And we did the same thing to the O-line. So we'll go as far as those guys will take us, you know, the, those big guys up front on both the O-line and D-line. I think they can set the tone for our team. At E. Bodden on Twitter for Kalani, he says, uh, where do you see the most growth in your squad from last year to this year? 
Uh, just having everybody healthy and then just having that, um, the maturity on our team, just guys that are, have been around for a long time. You know, we, we have uh, a large number of guys that's been, been, this is not their first game and not even their second year. You know, they just, they've been around. Look at Zach Wilson uh, going to his third year, but he's been kind of broken up with the injuries that have kind of disrupted his seasons. But then you look at, um, you know, the, the path that, that Lopini and all the other guys have come back from. We got to keep our guys healthy and, and get a rotation going so that uh, they can be sustained, sustain it throughout their health throughout the season. Okay. One final question here at uh, Bryson Denny from Instagram, Coach. Where do you see the team going this year? I'm only focused on what we're going to do game two. You're going right. to West Point. That part, that yeah. part you know. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> all. I'm going to focus on on trying to stay as healthy as possible. Um, you know, looking at the the sideline, there are times that we could have done better with the masks. You know, being up and. Um, but, you know, we so far players have done a great job at being safe and, and, and doing well with the testing. So we're going to focus on that and then our game plan for Army. That's all I can focus on right now. All right. Good questions, folks. Appreciate it. We'll do it again next time out. Uh, Mondays at 1 Eastern, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on the Coordinators Corner with Jeff Grimes, Eli Satuiaki, and Ed Lamb. It is also on demand on the BYU TV app. After the break... Which Cougars made the 53-man NFL rosters? The must-have jersey accessories for today's fashion-conscious players. We'll look at those. And Deep Blue profiles junior receiver Dax Milne. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. The NFL season kicks off for this week, and seven BYU players made 53-man NFL rosters, including... Michael Davis with Chargers, Taysom Hill with the Saints, Harvey Longy with the Jets, Daniel Sorensen Chiefs, Sione Takitaki with the Browns, Kyle Van Noy Dolphins, and Jamal Williams Packers. Fred Warner uh, is going to be on the 49ers roster, but is currently on the COVID reserve list. Uh, Bronson Kafusi, uh, Corbin Kafusi, Tyson Williams uh, signed to respective practice squads. So uh, the number of BYU alums in the league, solid group with, uh, uh, you know, a top 100 guy like, uh, like, like, like Fred Warner, a Super Bowl champion. With Daniel Sorensen, Taysom Hill makes uh, makes news by doing what Taysom does seemingly every week, and it looks like the Saints actually put him ahead of Jameis on the depth chart as the true number two to Drew Brees. So, uh, ex Cougars making their names in the league. Yeah, we we have more more guys on our squad that that should be in the NFL next year. So, looking to add to that list. Uh, just thankful for all the guys that are in the NFL that that keep in touch with our players, our program. Uh, it was nice to get uh, you know uh, text messages from Andy. Uh, last night on the game and, and all the you know all the alumni that we have and it's an extensive group there that, that are connected with our players and uh, it's just it's a one big fam- family so we're excited to, to see them represent and looking forward to the, when they start playing as well. So Andy Reid shouted you out on, uh, on yeah, the text after the win last night. Hit me back and I was you know just trying to get as much uh, um, you know advice as I possibly can from Super Bowl champ. Mm, that's pretty cool. Very nice. Uh, look good. Play good. That's a real thing for the modern college football player. Tonight's Cougar Q&A looks at the accessories needed to make the uniforms really pop. It's presented by Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. Accessories that I wear, I wear the same thing basically every game. I wear a sleeve on my left arm, and then I have two little bands that I wear on my right arm and left arm, and then I wear a towel. Usually whatever I wear the first game, I'll wear throughout the the season. At the start of the season, I'll kind of experience with a few different looks, but once I find a look that I really like, I'm superstitious, and so I'll keep that look. I'm superstitious about that kind of stuff. I'm kind of superstitious, so I tend to wear the same thing every single game. I never wear the same thing two games in a row. My go-to swag is my two sleeves, um, and then I have my, I wear two sleeves on my legs, and then of course, you gotta have the gloves and a visor. I try to do all the arm sleeve and stuff, but I mean, I'm a line. Usually, I get made fun of if I wear a sleeve, so I'm like, you know what? I'll just save myself. Maybe get some inspiration from like an NFL guy, Gronk, or Travis Kelsey, and they always have the best swag. But I can't afford that stuff, so I just go to Mick and get whatever's closest. Personally, I always try to mimic Christian McCaffrey. I always gotta have my headband, uh, Jordan headband, the tie in the back. Um, and then mixing up the sleeves, whether it's one sleeve or two sleeves or, or the quarter sleeve. Headbands, I wear the same headband every game. This is about the coolest as I get, and nobody ever sees it. I just do it to keep sweat out of my eyes. I think if you uh, have confidence in what you're wearing, you think you look cool, then, then you definitely uh, play better. Everyone's got something. Hey, I, 
Don't talk to me about clothes. I, I wear everything that's free, pretty much. <laughs> what, what's your go-to accessory? I, I know you're a, you're a hat guy, a cap guy, and, and you have mm-hmm. favorites, right? Like the royal blue hat. Yeah. And uh, I, get, I get all kinds of uh, criticism because it doesn't match. I really don't care about matching. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I, I, they they have a lot more time on their hands to think about that. But even when I played, I didn't do all that. All right, junior receiver Dax Milne, who we saw in that feature there, uh, he had FCS offers from Weber State and Southern Utah prior to a walk-on offer from BYU. Luckily for the Cougs, he took it and earned a scholarship after his freshman season, and now he's one of the top targets on the team. But his focus has always been much closer to home. In this week's Deep Blue, we look at what Milne calls his why. Dax is probably one of the quietest guys you'll meet, has a big personality, but doesn't, doesn't really show... A lot through words. It's just through his example. Retains the playbook. He's tough. He's a guy that I could keep on the field every single play, and I know he'll he'll give it everything he has. It speaks a lot to his character. Fires goes deep for Mill. It is. Oh, what a grab! Spectacular catch. To sit in the stands and to see him have such just wonderful moments, like scoring touchdowns in ball games and against uh, USC, were just you know brought us all the tears. You know when you see those things happen. Touchdown. I remember the game, he showed up on the Jumbotron when he started on his, in his first game. And that was like a huge, big, big brother moment for me. Just to see the, all that harder pay off from all of our time throwing together. And, and uh, I guess like the, you know, the video games helped out a little bit too. But. <laughs> remember when we played that uh, small like Nerf ball and we could just chuck it like... Oh yeah. Probably missed, wasn't that far though because back I in the day. That thing. And you think back to when he was just five and six years old, wanting to play football, you know, and it was his dream. So to, to see him live out his dream right now is it's 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 very fun and, and and exciting for the whole family. Darren and Jill, his mom and dad are are incredible people and they've raised him right. And, and uh, he's gone through a lot of adversity, you know, specifically with his mother and her encounter with uh, with cancer. Yeah, I just feel like yesterday. I remember on the couch over there, you sat me and Dax down. I saw that serious sort of worried look on your face. I remember my heart kind of sank a little bit. She said, ah, I went to the doctor, and I just thought, like, oh, it was probably nothing. But then she said, I've been diagnosed with stage four cancer, and... <clears throat> I ended up going in and having a colonoscopy and they were able to determine that I did in fact have a tumor in my colon. After the diagnosis, I, I, they went to do more, ex, more testing to see if it had spread. And unfortunately it had gone into my uh, liver. It was hard, I think, for all of us. It was, it, it rocked, I think, everybody's world, I think, you know, and it's, it's a scary thing to know that, you know, when, you, when you're diagnosed with stage four cancer, you don't know what the outcome's going to be. And of course, you know, death is definitely a possibility at that point. So I think that was probably a very hard thing for them to process. I couldn't really dwell on it that heavy because I had, I had my freshman year of football going at BYU and it was already a huge adjustment coming from high school. And there was a lot on my plate. I tried to put it in the back of my mind, but I know that's kind of bad to say, like, don't, like, not think your mom, but I try to, like, compartmentalize, like, have football, and then after football, just make sure she was okay. Once we got the diagnosis, and it was like, okay, what do we need to do? Let's we need to do this, 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 and this, and you, you just did it without any reservation, but your, your positive attitude has helped us. Your faith, your looking outward to a to serve other people while you're going through this was such an example for us. Overall, she she handled it like it's like a champ. Probably get too emotional if I keep talking about her, but she's amazing the way she handled it. And, and I'm uh, so grateful that she's still here today. So The fact that she's been able to beat it um, was no surprise to me. I think that's where uh, Dax probably attributes a lot of his toughness to. And anyone who, who who's been through a battle of cancer or knows someone close who has, those are hard things to fight. And so um, I don't think there's any coincidence there in, in why Dax is so tough. 
you can't help but learn something and grow. And I think that's the whole point of us going through these types of things is to learn and grow. And that's why our Heavenly Father allows us to experience these things, that we're stronger than we think we are, that we can do hard things, that we can make it, we can do it. We are fighters. During that time when she went through that experience, and that was when I really found my why in, in life and in football. My why is, is my mom. Hoping and praying that things will continue to go well and be good. Yeah. We got a strong mama. Strong mama. Had you seen that? No, but you guys are trying to make me cry <laughs> every one of these shows. Um, Dax is one of the toughest kids I know and comes from an amazing family, you know. And, and um, these kids, they, 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 they play this game with heavy hearts, and, and a lot of them have things like this going on. And what's been amazing about watching Dax from his freshman year being able to serve others like his mom did and, uh, you know, take others' burdens and then make them better, uh, even when he was going through some struggles. So uh, this kid is tough physically, mentally. He's, he's a, it's an honor for me to be his coach, and uh, what a wonderful family. So just, just an honor to, to know him. Those deep blue features, so good, by the way, and presented by America First Credit Union. And uh, Dax's numbers, uh, you know, some guys come to BYU as, as you know, high-profile recruits. You know about them, and, and you wait, wait for them to kind of, you know, become stars. And then there's guys like Dax. Not a lot of people knew his name when he got here. Earns himself a scholarship. He's now in the starting rotation, and he puts up numbers. Well, from the very beginning, he came as a true freshman and, and played. And that's difficult to do. Uh, if you're a scholarship guy, but if you're preferred walk-on, it's even more difficult. And uh, we knew right from the beginning, like, oh man, this kid is definitely a scholarship-worthy t- type of player. Mm. And um, what jumped out to you immediately? Oh, well, just he's just got this this uh, nothing. The, some guys have a hard time with the spotlight. There's not any moment too big for him, you know. And I, I think uh, you look at, at his why, and you look at the things that, that how he was raised, and it just makes a lot of sense. I, I think. Uh, he's going to have so much success in life uh, because of the way he was raised, but it's the way he approaches his relationships with his friends, his teammates, and also the way he, he approaches his job on the, on the field. He's, the way he blocks downfield, he does all the little things right, and uh, it, just, it just it stood out to uh, myself and Fessy. And, you know, Fessy saw it from the beginning. All our, all our coaches on our staff saw the things that he could do mm. and uh, knew that he had a, a vital role in this team's success. All right, heading to a break, we'll ask you that if you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, you'll want to try Smith's Click List, where you order online, then you pick up curbside right by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Fans, watch the women's soccer blue and white scrimmage this Saturday night, 9 Eastern, on the BYU TV app. Despite having the season canceled, the Cougars will scrimmage, and you can watch soccer Saturday evening. Coming up, the three TDRB, Lopini Katoa, joining us live from here on campus as BYU football with Kalani Sitaki continues. BYU football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare. Always here for you. Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. And by Qualtrics. Well, very few BYU players have paved a more consistent path to the end zone than our player guest this week. And Lopini Katoa's TD touch was on display again last night at Navy with three more scores, including the second longest rushing touchdown of his BYU career. What a night it was. Turn of the handoff from Wilson to Katoa. Katoa shoots a gap. There goes Lopini. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! Wilson gun with Katoa now. Caught by Katoa. 10, 5. He's going in. Touchdown! Lopini Katoa for the second time tonight. First and goal from the one handoff. Lopini Katoa gets to the goal line and puts the ball across the plate. Another Lopini Katoa touchdown. It's a first half hat trick for Lopini Katoa. All right, and joining us live from the Student Athlete Building here on campus, we say hello to Lopini Katoa. Pini, how you doing? Good. Good, thanks. 
Did you get some sleep today? Yeah, I got a little bit, but after a game, I never really can sleep. But after the, the excitement of yesterday, it was really hard to sleep this time. Kalani, give us a sense of what the, a day after a night game on the East Coast is like for Peeney and you guys. Well, we didn't get back until, what, 5.30? Had to fly into Salt Lake City, and uh, we told these guys they were excited to get to hang out a little bit longer with, the, with their teammates. But, uh, you know, the, when Peeney's smiling on the field, that usually good things happen, and, and he's got so much ability that, uh, <laughs> you know, when, the, when he's positive about the flight and, and the, the travel plans, the, the rest of the team will follow. L- Lopini, how do you look back on last night's performance, both individually and from the team at Navy? It just felt good. You know, I, I mentioned yesterday, just when you see your hard work pay off, it there's nothing that beats that feeling because, you know, we've been working hard. We've been w- putting in the same amount of work since I've been here. Um, it's my fourth year, and, and to see it pay off like it did yesterday um, was just so special. The numbers on offense were big. The rush numbers were huge. Did you have the sense as one of the running backs that, that a night like last night was possible, knowing the kind of guys you're running behind on the O-line, that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I felt so confident going into the game. And just our what we did during camp, um, running behind them, it was just really no surprise, um, the results we had yesterday, because they, they were doing so great. Um, and then they put it to work uh, in the game. You mentioned uh, Lopini having a smile on his face. We're going to see a play here in a second. And I think it's the first, uh, I think Lopini's first rush of the night. It comes on the first possession of the game. And, 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 And what stands out here is Lopini, you may not see it, but we do here. You get up after this pile and Kalani, look at the, look at the broad smile. Like that's a guy happy to be playing football again, I think, right? Hey, that, listen, that I know his family, how he was raised and that, the, the physical part of the game, even though he's athletic and can catch the ball in the backfield, I mean, he's got the athleticism and speed to play a lot of different positions, receiver, safety. Um, but the, the, the fact that he's smiling is because he loves the physical part of the game. That's mm-hmm. a big big reason uh, that that smile broke out. And, and uh, when Lopini's having a good time, uh, that, uh, it's, it's, it's infectious. It can, it's contagious to the whole team. And, and uh, even things like that, I think he, he, he's the first to show appreciation to his teammates for the blocks and you, you see him how he works the sidelines it's it's a uh, it's perfect it's what, what why i recruited him and why i needed him on this team mm-hmm. pd how happy were you to be playing football again last night with your boys it felt so good it's just like you mentioned and like coach mentioned just i just i just wanted to hit somebody like i just wanted to get the first hit out of the way and and feel and get back in the swing of things and so to be able to have the O line open up a gap and just let me run downhill uh, it felt so good. So, yeah, it was it was so fun yesterday. Three more touchdowns for you, and you have become a true TD machine here at BYU. You don't need a lot of touches uh, to get into the end zone. It's been kind of a knack that you've had. And and Kalani, there really is something about guys like that who have a nose for the end zone, and and he's been one of those guys. He does, and and you know I think he um, a lot of credit goes to our our guys blocking for him, but. Uh, Lopini does a great job setting up the blocks. He, he and Tyler did a great job doing that, and uh, he's been doing that since he got here. He has a natural feel for it, and uh, I saw him doing that when he was at uh, American Fork High School, so it only, only makes sense that he could do that here and continue it. Okay, uh, Lopini, a thought or two from you about the offense as a whole. A lot of focus on the ground game, but it was more than that working last night. How happy were you to see all phases kind of uh, kicking in and contributing? It was awesome. Uh, you know, I'm biased as a running back that when the run game is going good, the whole offense is, is going to work out really well. So the fact that we got that going fast and early on in the game, um, that always helps out. But even if it wasn't there, um, the receivers, Zach, uh, they could have made plays happen too. So I think you just saw a glimpse of what we could do last night because um, there's so much more to our offense. And, and Kalani and Lopini both on this, a lot of guys got to play in a game like last night too, which is, which is uh, important. Yeah, it's really valuable. You know, um, had, had another group of low linemen get in there and get some valuable reps and kind of just get, you know, it, it pays off for everybody when, when they're able to work hard in camp. And uh, some of these guys only do it for or a chance of getting to play in the game. So when you have an opportunity to play them a lot more and give them some valuable minutes and not just at the end, 
Um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to go a long way for our players. And Peeney, whether it was the number one O line or the number two O line, they were busting open big holes for anybody running, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they, it's just they didn't skip a beat. Uh, second O line was ready to go, and it was awesome. What do you want to uh, get out of this bye week before you head back east and play Army here in uh, 11 days? Uh, just stay stay game ready. You know, um, bye weeks can be tough at times, but just um, not losing the momentum, momentum that we had, um, just building off of the good things that we that we did in the game. And then, you know, there's always mistakes to clean up. And so I'm sure our coaches will, will get us prepared, um, clean up our mistakes, and um, put an even better product out on the field uh, come the game day against Army. Kalani, you mentioned why you wanted uh, Lopini on, on, on your team. And if you go back far enough, you're going to find Lopini Katoa at American Fork High School. You knew about him there. Uh, James Empey was one of his teammates there. You guys mm-hmm. are teammates again <laughs> after all this time. We're showing a picture to our, our, our viewers that Peeney has you uh, with James Empey as, uh, as cavemen back in the day. That's awesome. We could we could track pictures from about sixth grade oh. <laughs> in that same little formation right there. If we wanted to, so it's been it's been great to continue to play with them. And and Kalani, a lot of things stand out about about Lopini on the field, off the field. Just a great personality, and I imagine guys in the locker room gravitate toward him and love having him as as a teammate. Definitely one one of our leaders on our team, and it's why uh, they voted for him to be captain. You know, and, and why they wanted him to be a leader, and they wanted to follow him and. Uh, he's been doing that. He had. He always had like that ability. And and when he stepped on here as a freshman, he he was leading right away. Um, and and his his work ethic is unbelievable. So uh, this young man is going to go a long ways. And I, I'm just going to just sit there and cheer him along the way as he smiles. Well, I'll I'll let Kalani thank him next. But uh, from me, Lopini Katoa, uh, thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, have a great and safe week, and good luck at Army. All right, bro. Love you, man. Appreciate it. Love you, Coach. All right, thanks a lot. That is Lopini Katoa. All right, you can break down Cougar football with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, and David Nixon each week on After Further Review at 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app Tuesday night. As we go to break, here's this week's trivia question presented by Qualtrics. BYU's 52-point margin of victory at Navy was the largest against an FBS opponent since a 52-0 win over which team in 2009? We'll tell you after our final break. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. BYU's 52-point margin of victory at Navy was the largest against an FBS opponent since a 52-0 win over which team in 2009? The answer is Wyoming. All right, last night at this time, BYU was well on its way to a runaway at Navy. It was a game that saw the Cougs roll up almost 600 yards of offense and score 55 points while sinking the Navy attack with a dominant D. So we had plenty of options to come up with BYU's top five plays from Annapolis. Play fake, deep drop for Zach, loads up and goes for it all, goes for Romney, and Romney makes the catch inside the 20 of Navy. Tremendous grab by Gunnar Romney, having himself a night. Four for 134 and a score now for Gunnar Romney. The option keep to the right and the measurement places the ball short of the line to gain and BYU football on the turnover on downs. A fourth and one and Navy comes up inches short. Mason Wake again, a wing on the left. A turn and a handoff from Wilson to Katoa. Katoa shoots a gap. There goes Lopini. 25-20, 15-10-5. Touchdown! The Cougars make it 13-zip. Another rushing score for BYU. First Algier, now Katoa starting strong on the Cougars in Annapolis. Wilson under center. The snap, the turn handoff to Algier. A hold to the left. Tyler near side, 25-20. The 15, the 10, the 5, the dive, the touchdown! Tyler Algier from 34 yards out, and the Cougars open up on top. Twins left. They motion one of the two. Katoa from left to right. They dump off screen to Romney. Makes the catch. Steps through a tackle. First down and more down the near sideline. 30, 20, inside 10. Five is going in! Individual 
individual effort by Romney. All right, great stuff from last night out in Annapolis. Well, before we leave you tonight, we have this from the In Case You Missed It file. And it comes courtesy of Mason Wake on BYU's only tight end catch of the night last night. What do you make of this? Kalani. Only the best of fullbacks attempt this jump. And uh, <laughs> if you look in the archives, I'm sure you'll find that I tried this a uh, couple of times. And so it's just, it just makes sense that Mason, Mason does that as well. <laughs> okay. And, uh, oh, there, we, also, we also brought this up. Um, and, again, similar deal in case you missed it. You may not have seen this from the sidelines last night. Oh, gosh, you could fast forward this far. <laughs> Shake a leg. And you got a player to join you, too. That, 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 that's when it's really bringing the team together. Well, you know, Troy oh, and I. Well, I, I think I hear a little music <laughs> to go along with this, too. Makes a little more sense. Troy's been around for a long time, and, and uh, he's seen him smile, and uh, he should have his mask on. But seeing him smile and have fun with it uh, <laughs> is, is a big deal, you know. And if we kind of had, I, I think I have a few dances with, them, with uh, each one of those guys, and just good to see Troy out there leading the way and, and being a, a great captain for our team. That's funny. I, I was thinking about uh, the night, and, and I almost forgot that there were no fans in the stands. It became more about the team and how the team came together, playing so well, of course. But, uh, again, moments like that kind of illustrate that, uh, you know, the team spirit's alive and well, even without necessarily a full house. Yeah, and I, I mentioned it before, that this, the, the high level of appreciation on our, with our players and even our coaches and our staff, you know, just to be there and uh, I know you feel the same way. That just uh, it, it felt good to get out there and and do something that was uh, trending towards being normal and having a normal life. And and, and uh, just thankful that I get to uh, share this experience with you and, and others, especially the players on the team. And we're appreciative as well. Uh, this note: uh, When the Cougars took the field last night, uh, they did so uh, unified uh, with two messages printed on the front and the back of a T-shirt, uh, which the players all wore at the stadium. Uh, here's what it said and what it means. We knew that come Monday, come game time, that there were going to be a lot of eyes on us and a lot of people watching. And uh, we wanted to spread a message to the world and to the country. And that message is of unity and of love. A message that to us exemplifies how everyone should live life. Love your peers, love one another, regardless of their skin color, culture, or background. You know, if you go into our locker room right now, you'll find guys from different backgrounds, different cultures, uh, different beliefs. We had decided that we wanted to be united together, and we do that through love. In a world full of uh, confusion, misinterpretation, inequality, and injustice, uh, we've, we've chosen to love, and that unites us. All right. Uh, why do you think it was important that that came about the way it did? How did it come about, and, and what are your thoughts on it? Uh, the players wanted to do something, and, but they wanted to promote something that, that was unique to BYU and, and uh, to further the mission of why they came here to the school, and that's to promote the, uh, the words of Christ, you know, and, and, and center it around on that and, 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 and express our feelings of uh, peace, harmony, and love. And so uh, that idea seemed, you know, something that could, I think could unify a lot of different people, regardless of how you feel about what's going on in the world or whatever your political affiliation may be, uh, we have players that are going to try to promote uh, Jesus Christ and, and the gospel and the things that he taught here, which is centered around love. In the final minute we have left, we haven't talked about uh, the relationship uh, that you got to renew with Ken Matalolo last night. Um, being on the field before, after the game, just being a part of that experience, how do you look back on it now with him? So cool. You know, I, I've, I've always looked up to him and, and as a mentor and uh, it, was, it was a fun moment, but uh, just just honored to be part of uh, history. We talk about it now, you know, being uh, never thought that two Polynesian coaches who could be in this position and just thankful that I, I, I um, have this opportunity to be the head coach, but also to share this moment with, with a guy that we come from the same area. You know, we're, our families are all from that North Shore. So it's, it, was a, it was a really cool and unique moment that I will cherish forever. Yeah. It was a great night in a lot of ways, and hopefully the start of a, a great season for BYU. We're glad it's underway. All right, we'll do this again next week. We will talk to you next Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern as we preview BYU's trip to Army West Point and a second straight option team to open the season. For Lopini Katoa and the coach Kalani Sitake, I'm Greg Grubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Good night.